We're glad to have each other with us today. We thank God for our church. We thank God for you and uh, your faithfulness in giving yourself to the Lord. And we thank God for a church that opens up to missionaries and people who are serving the Lord. Now, I believe that's one reason God has blessed our church is because we uh, love missions, missionaries. We try to encourage them and help them. And the thing about it is that our church has been a host for them. When they come, many times they stay right here. And uh, you give your time to them by giving things they think that they need. So we thank God for your faithfulness and supporting our missionaries. The word grace, as you get the outline that you have, you'll be using that one. We find that the two words, grace and faith, are important words. We are thinking about the word faith. Uh, without faith, we cannot please God. And so we thank God for, for grace and faith. For by grace are you saved out of faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We thank God for His mercy, His grace and love extended to all of us every day. And we thank God for him, His patience. Now, I'll, I'll start with this outline that we got in there. The word, the word grace has many meanings. This is at the top of the page. Uh, Webster said in the new dictionary, number one, unmerited divine assistance given man for his uh, regeneration and sanctification. A state of sanctification enjoyed through divine favor. A virtue coming from God. A short prayer at a meal, asking a blessing or giving a thanks. One says, will you give, will you, will you, have, will you, have, will you have grace? Number three, it has uh, to do with kindness, favor, mercy, pardon, a special favor, privilege, uh, reprieve, uh, acceptance. Number four, a charming trait or accomplishment, attractive beauty, fitness, proportion of alignment, expression of seed. Ease, movement, charm. She's so graceful. He's so graceful. Number five, a person's name of the title. Duke, Duchess, Archbishop. We talk about his grace. A sense of pride, consideration, of thoughtfulness. So the word grace has a lot of, a lot of meanings. But to talk about God's grace is my unmerited favor extended to all of us. And we need his grace every day. The Bible says, let us, uh, it's on Hebrews 4.10, I believe it, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And uh, God knows all of our needs, and we all have them, physical, spiritual, financial, emotional. We all have needs, and he knows what those needs are. His promise to supply those needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We come down to let us consider some grace uh, in Revelation here that I mean through a sovereignty and grace, salvation and grace, suffering and grace, sufficiency and grace, stewardship in grace, service and grace, and singing. So these are some of the topics we look at very briefly together. And the first one we look at grace and divine of sovereignty. This is number one. Grace proceeds from God the Father, God the Son, of course, God the Holy Spirit. Number one, God is the God of all grace. The words grace of God is mentioned 24 times in 23 verses. We come down to number 10, in the bottom of the page. But the God of all grace, who has called us into his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect or complete, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. To him be glory, dominion, for and ever and ever. Amen. Number two, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 1, 10 through 17. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, 
His own received it not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even though they believe on his name. Verse 13. Which were born, not of blood, nor the will of man, nor the flesh, nor the will of, the, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. One of the names given to Jesus Christ is called the word of God. John bear witness of him, and Christ saying, This was a he who was faith. He that cometh after me is heard before me. Verse 16. And of his fullness have I we receive, and grace for grace. Verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. All of us are thankful for the grace of God that we experience every day. God's grace. His mercy, His love, His patience, His long-suffering. We thank God for that. Thank God He's so patient with us. We find number two. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Verse 16. And of His fullness have all we receive, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We thank that we live in a period of time that we do right now. We think of this fellow we looked at, John Newton. He was a very wicked man, a very ungodly man. But he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. As we studied last week, I believe it was, John Newton. And he wrote the song, Amazing Grace. It goes back a long time. And so it was truly amazing grace that saves us, that keeps us, the grace of God. Uh, leads us and directs us and we thank God for God for all his grace. In 2 Corinthians 8 9 it says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich. Acts 15 11 and we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we be shall save even as they. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of grace. How much more punishment suppose ye shall be not worthy, who have trodden under with the Son of God, have counted the blood of the cross covenant, were sanctified an holy thing, and have done despite to the Spirit of grace. The God of all grace, the God of mercy. We thank God for that. Now, on the next page, number three, <coughs> the grace and salvation. That's a tremendous truth. Ephesians 2, 5 through 10. Even when we were dead in sins, have you quickened made us alive together with Christ? By grace, you are saved. Verse 6. Now, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Think about that. We come off the same line of grace. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We're not, we're not working to be saved. Christ did all the work to make salvation possible. But we work because we are saved. God uses us. The Spirit of God lives within us. And we're his hands. We're his feet. We're his eyes. Uh, we're, we're, his, we're his mouthpiece. And so God uses us to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ in many ways. And so we thank that tremendous truth. So fifth, number four, grace and sufficiency. And uh, it says in 2 Corinthians 12, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, a thorn in the flesh. A thorn is very painful. 
We have terror stamp on the thorn bush. He's given me a thorn in the flesh. He says this. For this thing I besought the Lord three times. Lord, remove this thorn from me. Take this out of my life. I don't need this. I don't want this. I don't. And what did he say? He said this. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Mm -hmm. For in my strength is, uh, is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore I will glory, rather glory in my infirmities, mm -hmm. that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, mm -hmm. in respect to Necessity, persecution, distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Everyone is given grace. James says he gives more grace. Grace abounds. The grace of God abounds. It's abundance. We thank God for that. It's so abundant. It's so abounds. Where sin abounds. And sin is abounding everywhere. Look around it. It's getting worse and worse. Evil men will get, will get worse and worse. But the grace of God, where sin abounds, the grace of God does much more abound. Mm -hmm. It exceeds that. And we thank God for that, that promise. Where sin abounds, the grace of God does much more abound. We come on down to not only grace is sufficient, the grace in service. He says in Hebrews 12, 28, Wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. Is our service for God acceptable? Is acceptable with reverence and godly fear? Not slothful. The word slothful means lazy. Indolent, lax, carefree, not slothful and busy, lazy, but fervent, on fire, burning, bubbling up in spirit, serving the Lord. That's the way God wants us to be. He wants us to be fervent, on fire, burning, a light shining to dispel the darkness. We find that sometimes as we had the song sung the other day. Thank God they throw the play away. We're broken, we're we're scarred, we're chipped, and so he just puts us in the furnace of fire and he molds and shapes us over, over and over. And I thank God for that patience, that's love and mercy that God extends to all of us. He did not throw the clay away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we come down to grace and efficiency. My grace is sufficient. Grace and service. Not slothful, but fervent. On fire, burning, bubbling over. Let your light shine. In the Spirit, serving the Lord. Grace and stewardship. What is stewardship? The Bible says that we are actually caretakers, custodians of the manifold grace of God. So everything we have and all that we do, God has supplied that. Stewardship is required in steward that a man be found faithful. Over in 1 Peter chapter 4, every man hath received a gift, even minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it with the ability which God giveth. And God is of all things, may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise, dominion, forever and ever. 1 Corinthians 4, 1, 2. Let a man count as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required as stewards that a man be found faithful. Mm -hmm. Every one of us are stewards of those things that God has put in our hands. Everything we have, God has given to us. And we're stewards, we're takers, we're, we're, we're caretakers 
of those things he's put upon our care. Grace and stewardship. Go about grace and singing. I thought that was pretty good. Grace and singing. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, all wisdom, teaching, and admonish one another. And psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Sing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. Speak to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Sing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants us to be grateful and thankful. A spirit of gratitude, a spirit of uh, an attitude of thanksgiving. And we thank God that we have all these precious promises, the privilege of serving the Lord. Our solitary, salvation, suffering, when you suffer, my grace is sufficient to bring you through that experience. He knows your pain, he knows your heartache, he knows your suffering, grace and stewardship, our service, singing, all these things about the grace of God. We thank God that you and I are stewards of the manifold grace of God. Our time, our talents, our treasure, we don't take them lightly. They're a gift from God. And God wants us to use them wisely every day that we live. We're so glad that you've come today. We might hear these songs and testimonies about the grace of God. And uh, as we go forth, remember this. God knows where we are all the time. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're doing. He knows our thoughts. And God wants us to be yielded to Him. Required in stewards, command be faithful. How faithful are you? Dedicated, determined. Dedicated, determined to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with your time, your talent, your treasure, all that you have. God, my time is in your hands. And I want my, my life to count for you. I want to serve you. With all I got, help me to love you, to serve you with my mind, my spirit, my life. God help us to be faithful unto the Lord. Again, we say thank you for coming. We're going to have a word of prayer and pray for those that might be watching and listening on, on TV. And if you're here today and you're not sure about your salvation, you say, I'm not quite sure, preacher, I'm saved. I would say, do not gamble with your soul. There may not be a tomorrow. You want to make sure that today you drive a stake down. Reaffirm your faith. Say, Lord, I'm not trusting water baptism for salvation. I'm not trusting religion or some folk or some preacher. Lord, I'm trusting your son. He's the one that took our sin upon himself and went to Calvary. He's the one that bled and died beat with the cat of nine tails of brought it Paul. There was no beauty we should behold of him. There he is, suffering and dying and bleeding for each of us. And you and I need to love him and serve him and be what God wants us to be. If there's someone here today, you might want to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm not trusting baptism or religion or some pope or some man. I'm trusting your son. He's the one that took our sins upon himself. Went to Calvary and paid our sin debt in full. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that your son took our sins, died on that price, cross, paid our, our sin debt in full. And Father, help us now. Those who have made that decision by asking Christ to come in their heart, find a good Bible-believing church, Get into the Word of God, begin to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Help us all, Father, to grow and go forward in our service for the Savior. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.